So uh, I guess I can just start because it's time and um, for whether anybody else will drop. So yeah, um, my name's Jan. I work at Google uh, on the 8. And uh, I'm going to present uh, or hang out core to GN. So we're going to talk about the favorite uh, topic of everybody, which is bill system. And uh, I found this picture really expressive for the approach that Node has for the current build system issues. So um, this, the, the issue with build system has been there for the past three years. Nothing has happened since then. And the reason nothing has happened is that because it's complicated. Um, so Node, um, so first thing first, JIP is a build system that Node currently uses. GN is another build system that V8 currently uses. Um, V8 used to use JIP, but uh, we stopped doing that um, about three years ago. And uh, about one and a half years ago, we stopped um, updating JIP configurations on V8. The problem here is that Node actually still uses JIP, and one of the reasons Node still uses JIP is that all native modules rely on JIP to build. And um, like I said, at some point we discontinued the JIP build, but V8 actually tests against Node in our uh, continuous integration, which means we have to find a way to um, build V8 without upgrading our own, like updating our own two files because we stopped doing that, but still make sure that we can still build Node. And um, another thing to this issue is that GN, the GN team at Chrome um, is not that willing to uh, broaden the scope of um, supporting anything else in Chromium. So that makes it kind of not nice to, to switch over to GN. So what we do at V8, or at least what we used to do at V8, is we have this thing called dash dash build V8 with GN. And what actually happens there is we would build V8 with GN into a static library, and uh, we would build the rest of Node with a different tool chain and different build system uh, with JIT, and then at the, link, at the end, link both together. And uh, it worked well for us for some time, but it breaks often, and when it breaks, I'm usually the one who has to shuffle around, see how we fix it, and uh, it got a little bit annoying at some point. So what I did was at some point, I said, well, let's rethink this, and maybe we can find a better solution. Turns out that Electron actually already ported um, Node to GN because Electron uses Node as one of its dependencies, Electron uses Chrome, and uh, Chrome uses GN, so Electron uses GN, and so Electron was forced to actually come up with GN files for Node. And I was thinking, hey, maybe I can just take it, and it works. But no, um, there was quite a bit of things missing. Um, so what I learned through implementing all this is that GN is actually pretty nice compared to JIP, because JIP is just a huge, like Python object control that uh, the JIP script knows how to parse. GN is actually, has actually the same syntax, and it's pretty nice. The problem here is that Electron's GN files are very incomplete. It doesn't have like a build target for nodes uh, executable. There's nothing with tests. Um, it's not like you can just build it and, and it work, works out of the box. And uh, one of the issues is also um, the actual version relies on boring SSL because that's part of Chromium, but no one actually uses open SSL, which has diverged in the last two years. Um, while working on this, I also found that the actual board for GN has a bunch of bugs in there. There were a bunch of things wrong, and um, actually to make uh, node pass all the tests, you actually have to create this config JP file that's embedded into node itself. 
And uh, a bunch of those tests uh, rely on the content of content -tickness. So I had to emulate the content of uh, content -tickness. So this is an excerpt out of the GN file that I wrote for Node. Um, so we have the uh, build target for Node lib. We have an executable, we have uh, actions to run um, and the snapshot to build the snapshot. And from my perspective, they are fairly easy to read and uh, a lot nicer than um, Jeff. So currently, this lives um, as the fork on, um, in, on the Chromium's um, repo. Anybody is welcome to take a look. Um, there are a couple numbers I want to share. So the whole thing is mostly just um, a couple of scripts, um, a couple of um, build.gn files, and gni, that stands for uh, gn induce. All in all, it's about 4,000 uh, lines of code. Uh, what I was able to achieve from this is that building nodes um, on our continu uh, continuous integration got a lot faster. Um, I use a dependency uh, management system to pull in 11 dependencies. Um, it works on Linux, Mac, Windows, not that much because I still haven't gotten um, native modules to work. Um, but um, if, and, and one of the things that you can do now with the uh, GN build is that there's this thing called jungle build, which makes uh, building a lot faster. So you can actually build it on a macro pro within nine minutes. So I also want to talk about dependencies. So um, one of the changes I made is about managing dependencies for Node. So for everyone who already worked with Chromium or V8 knows that. If you want to set up the, like, uh, check out the repository, one of the things that you have to do is define sync, which looks at the content of a uh, text file, which then pulls all of those as dependencies uh, through an input. And the nice thing about this is that you can just specify all your dependencies as sort of, yeah, just one line, like where it comes from and at, at which uh, revision you want them and not actually embed them directly into a repository like currently what's being done for um, ICU or V8 or all other dependencies that no one is. So this is an excerpt of the text file. Um, as you can see, V8, both V8 and Node are um, just dependencies of this project. So the port itself is just a, a bunch of scripts and um, it build files. It doesn't actually include the you know, source code for V8 or Node or ICU. They're just specified as um, the place where you get them and the detach. So if you want to upgrade V8 uh, in this repository, the only, the only thing you have to do is to change the, uh, the, the commit ID, the, the uh, commit hash, and then do a time sync. It would then automatically pull uh, the right version of V8, and uh, you don't have to care about like cognitive stuff. So the result is that it's the greatest no build ever. Partly. So it's easier to update the eight, like I just uh, said, because um, all you have to do is to change the file. It's also easier to sync with um, upstream node because node is just another um, dependency here as well. Um, it makes it very easy for us to um, in at the eight team to test against node with changing the versions, because all you have to do, like I said, is to place the commit hash. Uh, one thing that you get with the GM build is um, sanitizer builds, like uh, address sanitizer, um, thread sanitizer, um, undefined behavior sanitizer, and um, if it, because the access, like the configurations for the build for those sanitizers are already included um, in the GM. And also, jungle build is included. So maybe to sidetrack, jungle build is a way to uh, speed up um, compiling and building by just merging individual smaller files into bigger ones so that the compiler only has to compile this one big file, which is a lot smaller, a lot faster than compiling every single individual file uh, by itself. 
So one caveat here is that no modules are actually not uh, supported because they are specified in the script and um, I haven't spent the time to dig into how um, npm install does all the magic of finding the tool chain and uh, what it does with them and like combining the stuff from common GP and config GP in, into the, the entire tool chain. So um, this is strange enough. So for the future, um, I'm thinking maybe we kind of stream this as a secondary build system alongside JIT, um, just to make it easier to maintain. Um, I'm not sure whether the uh, dependency management system is something that no would want. Personally, I like it a lot because it makes things easier. Um, it makes things like upgrading uh, single components a lot easier. Um, one open question is niche platforms like you know, free BSD that not a lot of people support, for which GN is not ported. And um, one of the outstanding things in my current implementation is that there's not a, like not a good implementation for building Opus Cell right now. I'm just doing the very basic version. Um, it doesn't support like um, generated assembly for Questions? So this is what happens if you uh, try to build it. Build it. Yes. Is there any chance? Thank you. Uh, is there any chance that the GM team will broaden their uh, support plans and uh, include Node? So at this point, there are none. But uh, I'm still talking to them. Because that would be a much better solution from my personal point of view. But so that's. I, I guess it is a good solution for uh, building a core, but not so much for node modules. Yeah, no, I, I agree. But for node core, it would be a much better, much, much better solution. So uh, I am, if there is anything that we can do as Node to make a case for it, mm -hmm. I think uh, we can possibly work on some such a statement. Yeah, so to I'm, get there. I'm definitely going to talk, like continue talking to the GNT um, to lobby them into you know, extending uh, that support for non-commune uh, users. And um, maybe that would also help it. Yeah, that, you know, if, if you need, you know, ask us, a, a, as asking a formal question or something, mm -hmm. as, as the TSC or whatever, we, yeah. we can, you know, mm -hmm. we can work on that. It's, uh, it's just that um, it seems to me, especially considering the Electron use case, uh, having a single build system for Node Core would be way, way more uh, maintainable and less you know, wasting work cycles on things that should not, you should not waste work cycles on. <laughs> yeah. So, so one of the things I'm, I'm trying to get out of this forum here is like, whether it makes sense for us to have GN as a secondary or not. Like, not the default one, but at least have it uh, as part of the node upstream repo so that, you know, um, it's easier to fix for I'm, I'm personally okay with that. Like, it's, I would recommend to file PR even. Okay. Mm -hmm. More questions? So I maintain native modules oh. are the blockers for native modules using something other than JIP. Well, I guess, uh, I mean, the, the way that no modules are expected to, to be built is using JIP. And there is, I, I don't think there is a new upgrade class here because if you move the expectation to GM, then you have all of those uh, existing node modules that are still using JIP. 
you cannot interpret them, uh, different with them. So um, I don't know. So at the individual module layout, like you already have push through stole scripts. Could that just kick off the GA process rather than rely on FDM to kick off more JIP stuff? Is that what you want for the package to kick off? I guess that would work, yeah. Okay, so last year when I checked um, and talked a bit to people about doing a build of G9, it seemed like the major blocker. So I talked to the Electron folks about this because they were um, interested. Um, I don't know if they talked to them on the Gabe side. Um, it seemed like the major blocker for switching over Node 4 would probably be Node WebKit because of how its dependency structure thing works. Um, Obviously, I mean, well, we don't, I don't think we need to worry about native modules as much because those don't use the same build system and they can keep using JIP at least right. for, for now. Um, so I'm not sure if you have um, gone and asked anyone over there. I have no idea about no computers. Do you have any tutorials and what the problem there is? Um, no, but if you ask, Shelly Moore, she might know. Okay. She's who I got that information. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't gotten any, like, uh, anything in that area so far. So last time I talked to her, she was happy that I'm doing it, but she didn't tell me anything about it. I'm sure it would be electron teams now, because they're having to do this to themselves. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I also have to a couple of fixes to them, and, uh, yeah. So... Um, so one of the things I'm still doing here, uh, you can see here, is that uh, building native modules, like there's a bunch of error tests uh, in Node 4. They are still built uh, using JIP, because all I'm doing there is to refer to the, uh, um, to the uh, NPN scripts that kick off the build for Node modules. And um, that's also one of the Places that doesn't port all that well to Windows uh, because you just don't have the correct tool chain so that the test just won't work. Kind of sucks. And one nice thing about GM is actually that um, as part of the dependency management, you also get the tool chain and tool, like, tool chain configuration. This is dependencies. So you always know that uh, it will build because it just brings its own tool chain with it. Of course, that means that we also have to download the plan and, uh, and the toolchain configuration as part of uh, building it. Uh, I, I think that's fine. All right, in that case, if nobody has any more, oh, okay. There's a question online, but I'll take it to the mic. This is from Raphael Eckerman, is that a good one? I uh, hope someone sees this, but one of my goals for JIP3 is to be able to consume GM syntax. That sounds awesome. Because then we can just switch to GM syntax and uh, we will work with either JIP or GM. Um, yeah, that sounds like a good hybrid solution. So if that makes sense, then I'll try to have the same uh, the GM files at some point. Um, maybe not with the dependency management system, because I think that would be a large change to load. But uh, it's just about the like the GM files that we need. In that case, that'll be great. Thank <laughs> you.